Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we will be talking about the evidence with fluvoxamine for the early treatment of COVID-19. I'd like to start this video by saying that today we are simply going over the data surrounding fluvoxamine. I acknowledge that there are no recommendations from the CDC or WHO about using fluvoxamine for the treatment of COVID-19, but I do think there is good data to support the theory that fluvoxamine can be used in the early treatment of COVID-19, and I want to discuss that here. Fluvoxamine, or Luvox, is an antidepressant drug approved by the FDA for the treatment of depression and obsessive compulsive disorder, and it is in a class of medication called SSRIs, or Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. Well, why is this class even being looked at as a possible treatment for COVID-19? The class of SSRIs are best known for treating depression by blocking a protein found on brain cells called the serotonin transporter. When the serotonin transporter is blocked, the amount of serotonin floating around in the brain is increased. And this is helpful because depressed patients have imbalanced serotonin levels. The name selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor gives the indication that this is all they do. They work on increasing the serotonin levels in the brain. But some of these drugs in this class are not as selective as others. Some of the SSRI medications also bind to receptors within a cell called the sigma-1 receptor, or S1R. And this receptor has various functions, including stopping the production of cytokines. Well, why could this be important in the early treatment of COVID-19? Well, it's becoming increasingly clear that the serious complications seen with COVID-19 are primarily from an out of control inflammatory response to the virus called a cytokine storm. This is when large quantities of cytokines cause widespread systemic inflammation that can damage multiple organs and can lead to death. The theory is that an SSRI with the highest levels of binding to the Sigma-1 receptor could help to prevent cytokine storm in COVID-19. And the SSRI with the greatest sigma-1 receptor binding is called fluvoxamine or Luvox, while lesser activity is seen with sertraline or Zoloft and fluoxetine, Prozac. Almost no sigma-1 receptor activity is seen with citalopram or Celexa or paroxetine, also known as Paxil. Okay. So now we have the background laboratory evidence. What have studies shown so far? Well, the first study is out of France. It's a multi-center observational retrospective study using data from 39 French hospitals. This type of study looks back at the data after the event has already occurred. Observational studies can have lots of bias but they are great at generating hypotheses and helping researchers know how to further develop randomized controlled trials. In this study published August 7th, researchers looked at data from 7,345 adults hospitalized with COVID-19 between January 24th and April 1st, 2020. They wondered if people that use antidepressants in general had a lower risk of intubation or death when they had COVID-19. Of the 7,300 patients observed, about 1,100 out of 6,885, or 17%, were intubated or died who did not use any antidepressants, while 143 out of 460, or about 30% of patients that use antidepressants died or were intubated. Of course, this sounds like the antidepressant wasn't helpful at all. But when you read the study a little closer, it states that the patients that were using antidepressants were older and sicker at hospitalization. Although I have to admit, the data was difficult to follow with this and they didn't show it well. But after the researchers did some statistical analysis to clear away these confounding variables, it appeared that patients that used the antidepressants isotalopram or Celexa, fluoxetine or Prozac, and venlafaxine effexor were significantly associated with lower risks of intubation or death. Okay, so as I mentioned before, 
This is simply an interesting observational study. I don't think anyone would change their opinion and start using antidepressants to treat or prevent COVID after the study, but it did go on to encourage a double-blind placebo-controlled study, and this study was in JAMA, which is a very prestigious medical journal. It was published on November 12th. This was a double-blind placebo-controlled study, which is the gold standard for studies. Researchers gave fluvoxamine 100 milligrams three times a day or a placebo to 152 patients with confirmed COVID-19 infection. The medication was started within seven days of the positive diagnosis and patients initially needed to have an oxygen saturation of 92% or greater on room air to be enrolled. The primary outcome or the main thing they studied was clinical deterioration meaning increasing shortness of breath with or without hospitalization and an oxygen saturation less than 92% on room air that may have required supplemental oxygen. They had to meet both criteria in order to be considered to have a clinical deterioration. Of those that took fluvoxamine, zero out of 80 met the criteria for clinical deterioration, although three did develop pneumonia but I assume that they did not have low oxygen saturations. While on the other hand, six out of 72 of the patients on placebo had clinical deterioration, and of these six, four required hospitalization and one was intubated for 10 days. The limitations of this study are its small size, but overall, I think these results are good. It was a well-designed study with good data. Although I do think it's interesting that the three people taking fluvoxamine that developed pneumonia were not discussed a bit more in the study. After this study was published, two physicians named Dr. Seftel and Dr. Bolware printed a brief report on their real world experience with fluvoxamine. This report has not been printed in a medical journal yet. In their report, they describe an outbreak of COVID-19 in a living facility in California. 113 people with a positive rapid COVID-19 test were given the option of isolation only versus fluvoxamine 50 to 100 milligrams orally twice a day for 14 days. 65 people opted to take fluvoxamine. 48 people opted for no treatment. Follow-up occurred at seven days and 14 days. Subsequent hospitalization was zero out of the 65 for those that used fluvoxamine and 12.5% or six out of 48 for those that chose no treatment. Of those who did not take fluvoxamine, two people required ICU stays with ventilation and one died. And those that did not take fluvoxamine still had ongoing symptoms, including memory issues and fatigue at day 14, while those that took fluvoxamine were symptom-free. These, once again, are very intriguing results, but I just don't think this unpublished study alone will change physicians' prescribing habits. However, when you take all this data together and look at the hierarchy of research designs, it does make me wonder why physicians are not talking more about this medication as a potential treatment for COVID-19. So far, we've had a retrospective observational study out of France, a double-blind placebo-controlled trial from the U.S. and published in a major medical journal, and a prospective cohort study in the U.S. that has not been published yet. Not one of these alone would be enough to convince me to use fluvoxamine for the treatment of COVID. But when I look at all these together, I do think this drug needs to be looked at more closely. Honestly, scientific trials are going to continue to be the best way to get the word out about this potentially life-saving treatment. So how can you help? I would encourage anyone to consider joining a trial to study the effects of fluvoxamine on COVID-19. There's currently a trial out of Washington University in St. Louis that's open for enrollment for anyone over the age of 18 with a positive COVID-19 test and having symptoms that started within the past six days. You don't need to live in the St. Louis area. Simply call 314-747-1137 or go online to stopcovidtrial.wustl.edu for more information and to see if you qualify. I want to specifically thank Steve Kirsch and the COVID-19 Early Treatment Fund 
for their tireless efforts to find drugs already in use to treat COVID-19 before it progresses to a severe and life-threatening disease. If you would like to learn more about the work that CETF is doing, please go to treatearly.org. Thanks again for joining me.